fun. Today we are doing a testimonial video for a course on the arguments of atheists for Islamic leaders. What could possibly go wrong? What was that? I found the course excellent. I came to this course because I wanted some systematic learning on atheism. Wait, wait, wait. Are you telling me you had to have an entire course to understand what atheism is. I really hope you didn't have to pay for that course. Spoilers, it isn't that complicated. Broken record time again, but it's simply the lack of belief in a deity or deities and nothing else. I will never understand the confusion some people have in this regard. I mean, it's not even a claim that there isn't a god, it's essentially a fact about a person rather than a position or a stance. It says nothing about what other things they believe or think. Seriously, being an atheist says as much about a person's ideas as knowing that they have red hair and green eyes. Or green hair and red eyes. Yeah. And how to deal with the arguments of the atheists. Arguments. Again, that doesn't mean anything. Atheists can and do hold an incredibly diverse set of views, understandings, beliefs and education levels, all sorts of things that go toward what arguments they will make in any given conversation. The only thing that you could argue with every single atheist about would go something like this. Hello, do you believe in God, Mr. Atheist? Uh, no. Yes, you do! Uh... See, that would be completely asinine. Now, I get what you probably mean. It's the arguments for science and the like. But those arguments could be made by any scientifically literate person. They could even be made by shock horror other Muslims. You know the kind of person who understands that maybe the facts about how the universe works should probably take precedence over the information contained in an ancient tome and find ways to integrate their faith with, you know, reality. And some of the suppositions of the atheists. Do you mean presupposition? And either way, there's only one. Everyone say it with me now. I don't believe in God. God. Your mum. And I found, alhamdulillah, the material and the lectures, you know, met my expectations totally. Well, that's a bit disappointing. Does that mean you went in thinking one thing and came out thinking the exact same thing? Because, well, that's not exactly useful, is it? Might as well not have bothered at all. Actually, the course was wonderful. I have benefited immensely. <laughs> it really sounds like he's rebuking that other dude. And I'm sure you have, man. Can you now define atheism without bringing in a bunch of bullshit that literally has nothing to do with the concept that one individual personally disbelieves the God claim and that has no real impact on other things that they believe? Because I'm guessing not. Aspects I never knew and how to dismystify science and uh, atheism and evolution. Demystify science and evolution, which is part of science, but you know, we're going to ignore atheism in this bit, because I'm not going to bang on and on about the simplicity of that meaning again, yawn. But demystify science is basically what you're saying here. What a baffling idea. Science is not magic. There's no component to it that requires any sort of religion-based understanding. Any established hard science can be understood, at least to a very basic degree, by anyone with a little patience and the right resources. You don't have to take the sort of leaps of faith to grasp the fundamentals. And you can do experiments for yourself to prove what's going on. No, I'm pretty sure when you leave this place, you are probably going to have a much looser grip on reality than you will have had before going in. What a shame. Well, what I wanted actually was, as I, you know, not only the history of atheism and its connected ideologies. The history of atheism. One day, theists were a thing, and thus the opposite had to be a thing too, because the prefix a essentially means not. So in a time before the first religion, 
it wasn't that everyone or every chimp or whatever. It's not that they were all atheists. They just didn't have religion. Let me put it this way. There's no such thing as atheist rocks because there are no theist rocks. Rocks don't, or more accurately can't, believe anything. They are rocks. Also, there are no specific connected ideologies because ideology is not a requirement to simply not believing one single claim. That's why you can have two people who exist on either end of a political spectrum have completely different ideas and philosophies. One could even believe in ghosts, zombies, unicorns, vampires and any number of other fictional concepts whilst the other does not and have essentially nothing in common. But they could both reject the claim that God exists. They would both be atheists and yet, as I said, it would have no bearing on who they are or how they think. But arguments against them, rational arguments against them. Lol, might want to start by having any idea who you're talking to? There is no rational argument to be had with a non-existent straw man. Here's a fun idea, and it might sound a bit crazy, but maybe talk to some real ones first. And as well as arguments based on the Quran and Sunnah, and alhamdulillah, that's what I found. If you're talking about arguing science, which I think you are, Maybe don't base your scientific arguments on a 1400 year old book that was written by an illiterate. Most science textbooks are updated all the time by non-illiterates and even they don't get everything correct. Just based on how fast the science moves in certain topics, I don't think the Quran is really going to keep up. I think this is vital. This is one of the number one areas of concern in respect to the Muslim community. What? Really? I mean. I'm not going to go into the problems that often surround Muslim communities. They are numerous, many of them the exact same problems as other communities that segregate from society at large or what have you. I'm not an expert and honestly it's a delicate subject that is just going to piss everybody off no matter how carefully I broach it and it is not the subject of this video so I'll move on. However, I think we can all agree that if your biggest problem is that some random stranger doesn't believe in your imaginary friend, you don't really have anything to worry about, do you? If they go to the leader of the community and he hasn't got the answers. If a leader in a religious community hasn't got an answer to literally every question ever thrown at them, regardless of their lack of knowledge on the subject, they aren't doing it properly and need to go back to sophistry school. It's part of God's plan. They were just sent to test our faith. Yes, children should be sent down the mines to dig for gems and precious metals. It's not hard, man. Then it discredits Islamic science and Islamic information. Do you know what's really sad? In the Middle Ages, there was what was known as Islam's golden age, when real science was being pursued and flourished. In fact, at that time, the Middle East was essentially the scientific center of the world, and it lasted for hundreds of years. If it hadn't been for various events causing the decline of science in that area, we would likely be a good deal ahead of where we are now technologically. One of the theories as to a main cause of the decline was a rise in mysticism. You know, woo. It's one of the reasons I fight against all forms of nonsense, even the silliest. Using coconut oil as toothpaste will be the end of us all. Mark my words. Therefore, it's extremely important for Muslims to be acquainted with this kind of knowledge. I would love it if you were actually becoming more acquainted with actual science, but whatever this was, I would bet my balls that's not what you were learning. I think it's an important course, uh, for, especially for the Duat. So the only Duat that I know of is the Egyptian afterlife. After searching for an Islamic meaning, I came to Dua, which is essentially spreading the message of God. Now, if that is what you meant, I'm sorry to tell you, but misunderstanding and thus misrepresenting what people do and don't believe is a terrible way to get them to convert to your religion. The funny thing is, people, they tend to have a good idea what they think and believe, and telling them otherwise tends to just piss them off and send them further away from your cause. Just some food for thought. Overall, I would, I would recommend this course to every and anybody who's a community leader. Only if you don't get enough of people laughing at you for being so ignorant. 
to get an you know underlining understanding about atheism and <laughs> no how as we as muslims can address some of the concerns the community has in respect to it so is this really something you guys are super worried about in some sense I'm quite glad. I mean, I'm no anti-theist. You can believe what you want as long as you don't try to screw with other people's lives. Then I say, have at it, mate. Enjoy yourself. Or not. Whatever makes you happy. Or doesn't. Man, I don't get the appeal of religion. <sighs> but the fact that there are more people comfortable with identifying as atheist and potentially in your communities too, that's cool. There was a time you could be ostracised or even killed for non-belief in the West. And of course, there are still places in the world where this is true. But many things that start in Western liberal democracies eventually spread to other countries. So it gives me some hope that people will be able to believe or disbelieve whatever they want in the future. And honestly, your guys' little seminars ain't going to do bugger all about it. I found all the teachers to be, mashallah, very helpful, very understanding, caring and brotherly. I'm sure they were, mate. I'm sure they were. Notice you didn't say smart, though. LOL. Ayere is a very important resource we have. Again, only if you really, really, really enjoy being wrong. Later, folks.